scientists for informed policy, and we want to bring the latest research on how climate change is affecting the ocean to a public policy audience. Hi, I'm Lauren Lindsmeyer, and I'm a PhD student at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography at the University of California, San Diego, and I study the effects of ocean acidification on corals. I'm using coral fragments and molecular techniques in order to examine the responses to ocean acidification and whether there's a potential for them to adapt to future conditions. Ocean acidification is the gradual increase in seawater acidity from the absorption of atmospheric carbon dioxide into the surface ocean. As carbon dioxide gas dissolves in seawater, it reacts with water and increases the number of hydrogen ions, which is a measure of acidity. When people say that the pH of the oceans is decreasing, they are referring to an increase in the concentration of hydrogen ions. While ocean acidification is a gradual process, it's occurring at a rate much faster than anything witnessed in the past 50 million years. This is because each year, a quarter of the carbon dioxide humans emit from burning fossil fuels gets taken up by the oceans. That's the equivalent of a train full of coal long enough to wrap around the Earth 14 times being dumped into the ocean every year. Carbon dioxide is changing the chemistry of seawater in two main ways. First, by increasing the number of hydrogen ions, which is the acidity, and second, by decreasing the number of carbonate ions. Carbonate is an essential mineral that marine organisms such as corals, oysters, mussels, and clams use to make their shells and skeletons. As the carbonate in the oceans decreases, this makes it much harder for these organisms to make their shells, and they consequently have to use more energy. For some organisms, this may mean they have less energy for other biological processes like growing and reproducing. Certain parts of the oceans are predicted to become so low in carbonate by the end of the century that corals and other shelled organisms will cease to grow and may even start to dissolve. This has major economic implications. Coral reefs are estimated to provide almost $30 billion of revenue in the form of jobs, food, tourism, biodiversity, pharmaceuticals, and other goods and services to people around the world. In addition to coral reefs being threatened by ocean acidification, some commercial fisheries might be at risk from food web interactions. While swimming organisms like fish appear to have a higher tolerance for acidification, they may still be negatively affected through decreases in the availability of their food sources. The pteropod, a type of sea snail, is a major prey item of fish like salmon and is highly sensitive to ocean acidification. If prey decrease in abundance, fish will have less food to eat and their populations are subject to decline. Fisheries and aquaculture employ 10 to 12 percent of the world population, and 90 percent of these jobs employ small-scale artisanal fishermen. Declines in fisheries from ocean acidification would have drastic economic and social consequences. Not only would the main source of protein for one billion people be jeopardized, so would the jobs of millions of impoverished small-scale fishermen. While ocean acidification poses major threats to marine life and humans, there are things we can all do to slow the rate of change. We can reduce our individual carbon dioxide emissions. We can opt for using more renewable energy resources, fly in airplanes less often, and vote for politicians who support climate change research and policies.